going live. Good evening, everybody. Welcome to uh, another edition of Old Baptist Weekly. It's certainly good to see you. Uh, I am uh, Mark Rao from the uh, First Framing Baptist Church in Dallas, and uh, we're very excited to have this opportunity again. Trust and hope that the Lord will watch over us tonight. Uh, before we go any further, let's meet our panel. Uh, Elder Mike Montgomery. Good evening, everyone. Uh, Elder Jerry Anstey. Hello, everybody. Uh, Elder David Elder McGovern. McGovern. Howdy, howdy. And we have uh, with us tonight a very special guest, Elder Dennis Cry from Duncan, Oklahoma. Hello, Brother Dennis. Greetings. I don't know how special, but I'm glad to be here. <laughs> You're special to us. It's good to see you. Uh, tonight, we're very excited. We have one of our own uh, that will actually, Lord willing, be preaching, uh, Elder Daniel Montgomery. Brother Daniel, how you doing? Doing all right. How you doing, Brother Mark? Doing all right. Good to see you again. And uh, we are certainly praying that the Lord would bless you and uh, give you the words that you need and the strength. Uh, before we do that, I'd like to ask uh, Elder Dennis Cry, if he would, to lead us in a word of prayer. Gracious and merciful Heavenly Father, as we gather this evening in this capacity, we're thankful, dear Lord, for the technologies that are available to permit this. Thou has blessed us so abundantly with things where we can get together and commune with one another. And we're blessed to enjoy and fellowship one with another. We thank thee, Father, for thy kindness to us, and that thou has seen into our needs and been so gracious and long-suffering with us. Thankful, Father, for forgiveness of sins. Thankful, Father, for the knowledge of thy Son, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ for the hope that we have in him. 
thanking thee, Father, for the abundant blessings of, of, of knowledge of thy word, and that thou dost continue to open unto us our understanding and bless us to be encouraged in the knowledge of the scriptures uh, that thou hast set before us. Pray thy blessings, Father, this evening on Brother Daniel as he comes to bring the message. Ask your Lord that thou would give him grace to be able to deliver the message this evening. Pray, Father, for grace for us to, to be able to hear and to receive, to hear with a spiritual ear, not just a natural ear, that we might feel, dear Lord, thy presence and thy, feel the spirit of the word as it comes forth this evening. We thank thee, Father, again for these opportunities to share and thank thee, Father, for thy rich blessings. Continue to watch over us, we pray, in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Thank you, Brother Dennis. Brother Daniel, uh, we'll turn this over to you. Lord bless. Thank you, Brother Mark. Thank you for that prayer, Brother Dennis. Uh, first of all, Merry Christmas, everyone. Uh, and we hope that you're having a wonderful time with family. I know it's a bit of a weird year, considering that uh, many folks have decided not to gather. Uh, we are praying for you all, and uh, we just hope that you have a wonderful season, and uh, and God bless. Uh, thought on my mind, I actually want to start in Luke chapter 2. This is not my verse, but this leads into my verse. In Luke chapter 2, verse 13, I thought I'd start with something a little bit Christmassy, okay? Uh, verse 13, and suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, goodwill toward men. I think we've all heard that, uh, if not on the Charlie Brown Christmas special. Okay, we, hopefully we've heard it, uh, um, you know, reading our Bibles, or, you know, for those of us that grow up in the music world, that's a very popular text that we hear sometimes. The thought of my mind is actually goodwill toward men. That's, uh, that's my thought today. And I want to approach that through the lesson taught in Matthew chapter 18. Um, so Matthew chapter 18 has a lot in it, and we're not going to cover all of it, but, uh, you know, for the sake of time. But I do want to bring a few things out of Matthew chapter 18. So if you turn with me to Matthew chapter 18, verse 18, Matthew 18 and 18, it says, Verily I say unto you, Whatsoever ye shall bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. And whatsoever ye shall loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Okay, context is, a, is important. Um, the the uh, context of Matthew chapter 18 is talking about the church. It uses the phrase kingdom of heaven. I had a really wonderful conversation with Brother Jerry over there about the phrase kingdom of heaven. And, uh, and I'm, I'm straight up stealing this from Brother, Brother Jerry, so if you don't like this, you can blame him for it. Um, uh, the kingdom of heaven, the kingdom is where the king reigns. So the kingdom of heaven is where God is. That can be used in several different contexts. So the kingdom of heaven under consideration for this chapter that he's focusing on is the church. That's, that's the focus of Matthew chapter 18. So when he says, whatsoever you shall bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, uh, he's talking within the context of um, speaking and acting and being within the church, within other members, within uh, children of God. So uh, what you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and what you shall loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. What you bring, what you keep within you on earth in your walk in life, you also bring into the church. What you loose in your life, how you act out in your life, will be reflective of how you act out in the church. How the, so you are not two separate people. Uh, you're not one person outside. I mean, hopefully, <laughs> really, we're, we're, we really, that's the, the goal, right? We're not one kind of person outside of the church as we are in the church. And these two things are inextricably linked. We are, are bound to these things. So uh, 
if I go out through the week and I have something that I've sort of internalized, uh, you know what? On Sunday, I'm going to bring that to the church as well. I, I will have internalized it. I will brought with me on Sunday morning. And if I had spread it out there, I'm going to spread it on Sunday. That kind of stuff. You know, we are not separate from our church selves at all. We are not. Okay. So now we need a little bit more context. So go to the beginning of Matthew chapter 18 with me. And this is actually something we talked about the last time I spoke on OBW. And I, I love repeating myself. Y'all should know that by now. So uh, chapter 18, verse 1. And at the same time, the disciples came unto Jesus saying, Who is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven? And Jesus called a little child unto him and set him in the midst of them and, ver and said, Verily I say unto you, Except ye be converted and become as little children, ye shall not enter into the kingdom of heaven. Okay, there's plenty of context clues within this chapter, as we've already said, that we're talking about the church. Okay, so kingdom of heaven for here, talking about the church. Whosoever therefore shall humble himself as this little child, pause, as this little child. I believe the last time I spoke, I spoke about children, actual physical children. Uh, what, what we're under consideration here is those that are as little children, those that are freshly entering into the kingdom of heaven, into the church, those that have uh, j just that freshness about, or perhaps it is a child that grew up in the church and is just now starting to have questions and thoughts and doubts and concerns and who is my God and who... What are the, you know, those type of things, uh, the, 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 the rookie stuff, which let's be honest, we're all still rookies <laughs> in the kingdom of heaven. All right. So uh, whosoever therefore shall humble himself as this little child, the same is greatest in the kingdom of heaven. And whoso shall receive one such little child in my name receiveth me, but whoso shall offend one of these little ones, which believe in me, it were better for him that a millstone were hanged about his neck and that he were drowned in the depths of the sea. Okay, th this is where it starts getting a little heavy. Um, if you offend one of these little ones, you can definitely take this in the context of offending children. It still applies. But you can also take it in the context of a, a, a spiritual little one. Okay, whoso shall offend one of these little ones which believe in me, it were better that you tied a stone around his neck, a stone around your own neck, and drowned yourself in the ocean. That's basically what it says. Uh, our goal, our job is to protect the lambs. That is part of our, especially for men as ministers, um, what was Jesus charged to Peter, feed my lambs, right? This is part of, uh, this is part of the, the, the gig, as it will, as you will. Um, so we have now introduced conflict into this and con dealing with conflict and dealing with offense. This is the introduction into that. So I'm going to skip three verses on purpose. We'll get to that. We're going to go to verse 10. The parable of the lost sheep. Take heed that ye despise not one of these little ones. For I say unto you that in heaven, heaven their angels do always behold the face of my Father, which is in heaven. For the Son of Man is come to save that which was lost. Here, adding more to the context of this chapter, saving that which was lost. How think ye, if a man have a hundred sheep and one of them be gone astray, doth he not leave the ninety and the nine and goeth into the mountains and seeketh that which is gone astray? And if so be that he find it, verily I say unto you, he rejoices, rejoiceth more of that sheep than of the ninety and nine which went not astray. Even so it is is it even so it is not the will of your father which is in heaven that one of these little ones should perish so now we really understand the absolute importance 
of protecting the spiritually young. I'm building to a point, I promise you. Part of the mandate of the church, not just ministers, but members of the church, is protecting, going out of their way to protect the spiritually young of whatever age. The spiritual lambs, we must protect, and we must rejoice in the protection thereof. And when they go astray, we must spend time, time to get them to come back to the fold, to bring them in, because the father finds that to be a moment of great rejoicing when one of his lambs returns to the flock. Amen and amen. How many times in my life have I been that lamb? How many times have I been that sheep that has gone astray? And how many times has the church come back and got me? And I'll give you the answer to that question every single time. Every single time. Okay. Verse 15. Moreover, so this is connected. If thy brother shall trespass against thee. What? <laughs> okay. Are we changing subject? No, no. He said, moreover. So this is connected. This is absolutely connected. Moreover, if thy brother shall trespass against thee, go and tell him his fault between. Okay. So actually I'm going to go back and I'm going to read three. So this will actually help connect verse 15 to this go save the lost sheep kind of thing. Okay. So verse seven. Woe unto the world because of offenses. I think part of the lesson of this chapter is that if you put the context all together, sometimes we lose sheep because the brethren fight. I think we lose sheep because the brethren fight. Um, and they see that, I think, very passionately. Last time I, I exclaimed uh, that the children are watching us, spiritual children too, okay? They're watching us, and they're very affected by what the brethren are doing. Not, not just ministers, but I'm talking mothers in Israel. I'm talking people that have been in the church their whole lives. The, the people that, whether they accept this role or not, they represent the church especially to those that are spiritually young, to the lambs that are just now walking in the doors of the church. Verse 7, Woe unto the world because of offenses, for it must needs be that offenses come, but woe to that man by whom the offense cometh. Woe to that man. If the offense comes by you, woe to you. Wherefore, if thy hand, here's where it comes from. This is where this Wherefore, if thy hand or thy foot offend thee, cut them off and cast them from thee. It is better for thee to enter into life halted or maimed rather than having two hands or two feet to be cast into everlasting fire. And let me finish verse nine. And if thy eye offend thee, pluck it out and cast it from thee. It is better for thee to enter into life with one eye rather than having two eyes and to be cast into hell fire. Okay. So, Brother Daniel, where are you getting with all of this? I come from the technology generation. I do. Um, I am, there's words that we use in education during training, which is um, uh, technology native versus a technology immigrant, okay? Uh, it's where it's native to you or it's foreign to you. Uh, it is native to me. There are those people that are um, older than me of older generations that have taken to technology very well. And then there are those uh, people whom I love very, very dearly who will, tell you straight out of the door that they hate they hate their cell phones because they just they just can't <laughs> okay um and so i i don't think technology is necessarily an evil uh so much as what has happened 
is that in within my lifetime, the ability for humanity to communicate, uh, one human to communicate with another human has become instantaneous. Um, it has become absolutely instantaneous, which means that we have, everything that we are is now magnified. Everything that uh, we are, we can, uh, at the push of a button, I think why, why journalists in particular are frustrated is because now anybody with a computer can be a journalist. Whereas at some point, you know, you had to be vetted, like you had to be really, uh, you had to go through school in order to get this platform where you could be in the Dallas Morning News. And then all of a sudden, you know, your opinion that you've spent months and months and months and weeks and this article that you've, and it's been vetted and it's been, you know, read over and edited. Anybody with a push of a button can do that now. And it's not edited, it's not filtered, it's none of that. Um, as such is what has become with social media. Again, none of these things are any more evil than a screwdriver, but as tools, as a tool that we have at our disposal, I don't think that we have had the time to process exactly what it has allowed us to do and where it has taken, where it can take us and where it has taken us. Um, so I, I want to kind of, so, so now that we have this, and I promise you again, I'm getting to a point, go to Matthew 18, 15. And now with this context of, okay, Facebook, Twitter, all of it, go through Matthew 18, 15 with me. Moreover, if thy brother shall trespass against thee, go and tell him his fault between thee and him alone. Okay, that's already hard now. I mean, if we're talking about a trespass that happened over Facebook, okay, where does this brother, where does this person live? Do they live, you know, I, I'm in Texas. Uh, maybe this person's in Florida or, or California or, or wherever. Um, all of a sudden, this process becomes incredibly difficult. This process that is so very straightforward when we're dealing with people in person has become incredibly complicated. Go and tell him his fault between thee and him alone. If he shall hear thee, thou hast gained thy brother. Well, that's still, that's still good. That's still true. But if he will not hear thee, here's where it gets more complicated, then take with thee one or two more, that in the mouth of two or three witnesses, every word may be established. Well, now, okay, so you said something on Facebook, or somebody else said something on Facebook, y'all got into it. Now, to get through this, what do you do? Have a Zoom meeting? Do you see where things get complicated? Social media is a tool that complicates spiritual discourse. I'm going to say that again. Social media is a medium that complicates spiritual discourse. It creates a stumbling block that God's people have never had to deal with on this scale. This is new to us. Enter somebody else on the other side of the world. Oh, that's terrible. Type, 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 type. Enter back and forth, back and forth. Now you're calling each other trolls. What? I'm not talking about some random people on the internet. I'm talking about members of the church. That's who I'm talking about. I'm talking about us. I'm talking about me. I'm talking about things that I've been guilty of as a member of the church, as a mi minister of the gospel. Verse 17, and if he shall neglect to hear them, tell it unto the church. Well, we may be, y'all's churches may be in fellowship, but I mean, if we're talking about thousands of miles in between each other, this is still your brother. The, the, okay, so then it goes into 18. 
whatsoever ye shall bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatsoever ye shall loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. These are things that we're internalizing, okay? What I am saying is that before it gets to this stage in 15, Jesus has already talked about verses 7, 8, and 9. Wherefore, if thy hand or foot offend thee, cut them off. My friends, we do not have the means, the spiritual means, to have spiritual... Oh my goodness, how, how do I say this? The kinds of things that I'm seeing on Facebook, the only defense for it is to not do it. That's it. The kinds of things that I've seen, the kinds of things that I've seen ministers do, the kinds of things that, um, and, and, and here's where it wraps all back into the lost sheep. There are people that have left the church because of things that they have seen Primitive Baptist post on the internet. Now, I, I'm not going to read into that. And I'm not ascribing anything to anyone, but I'm saying that that is possible. That is absolutely possible. That a way for us to lose sheep is to be irresponsible with our internet communication. It is public. It is 100% public. I don't care what your security settings say. I don't care. I Like... If you friends only doesn't matter. If you put it on Facebook, it's public, and especially for a minister, anything you say that is public. I mean, I'm not talking about being in your living room talking politics with somebody that you know really, really well, even if they're in the church. I'm not. Ta I'm not talking about that. I'm saying that if I were to go on Facebook and make a loud political statement, we could lose sheep because of what I said. We could lose sheep because of what I said. What is the, is, is it that important? And I know it's noisy and I know it's loud. And I know there are opinions out there that, that, that just irk us so much. And for that, I would point to, and I'm watching time. I'm not going to take much longer. I promise. I promise. David said, I don't have a whole lot of time. So I'm being, I'm being good, I promise. Okay, very, very quickly, this is Matthew 22, when he's talking about uh, uh, Jesus and Caesar's penny. Okay. Verse 15, Then went the Pharisees and took counsel how they might entangle him, and they uh, sent out unto him their disciples. Um, verse 17, Tell us, therefore, what thinkest thou? Is it lawful to give tribute to Caesar, unto Caesar or not? And Jesus perceived their wickedness and said, Why tempt ye me, ye hypocrites? Does that kind of go with that part of Matthew 18? Pluck out your, you know, pluck it out, get rid of it. Why tempt ye me, ye hypocrites? Show me the tribute money. And they brought unto him a penny. And he saith unto them, Whose is this image and superscription? And they say unto him, Caesar's. Then saith he unto them, Render therefore unto Caesar the things which are Caesar's, and unto God the things which are God's. He gives a he get he doesn't give a middle of the road opinion. What he gives is a, a an answer that enables spiritual moderation. That's what he did. And when they had heard these things, they marveled and left him and went their way. Jesus took this whole electric situation and he held it at arm's length and he said, I will not take this into me. I will not take this into me. I will deal with it, but I will hold it at arm's length. And through that, the whole situation diffused. The whole thing diffused. That goes back to Matthew 18 when it says, Whatsoever ye shall bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatsoever ye shall loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Friends, if we are binding ourselves to politics during the week, we're going to bring it into the church on Sunday. 
And if we're buying and if we're doing it on Facebook, at what point during the week do you stop being a representative of the church? At what point during the week do you stop being observed as a member of the church? These spiritual lambs, these spiritual children are watching us. They're watching us talk. They're watching us converse. They're watching us do these things during the week and then try to talk about the hope that is on Jesus on Sunday. How is that not hypocritical? How is it not? That this is, but how does, how does Jesus finish this out? He says, again, I say unto you, 19, that if two of you shall agree on earth as touching anything that they shall ask, it shall be done for them of my father, which is in heaven for where two or three are gathered together in my name. There am I in the midst of them. That's what we're shooting for. That's what we're shooting for. And I will close with this statement. John 13, 34. A new commandment I give unto you, that ye love one another as I have loved you, that ye also love one another. By this shall all men know that ye are my disciples, if ye have love one to another. Social media and politics has created a toxic explosion. Not just for the primitive Baptists, not just for us. I mean, for everybody, okay? And in the context of the church, what I don't want to see is it being brought into the church, being brought into our discourse, and causing us to lose lambs because of it. Inversely, if we actively show love one to another, we will be identified as disciples of Christ. We have a fantastic means, social media, to show love to one another. We should be doing that with it. There will be time to deal with Caesar at arm's length. But when we're in public, which is what social media is, when we are in public, and it, I mean, even when we're in private, but especially when we're in public, when we don't know who would be observing us, let's do nothing but show love to one another. Thank you for your kind attention. Amen, Brother Daniel. Amen. 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 Amen, Brother. Pertinent. Well, All I, right. get to go, I get Jerry? to go first, huh, Brother Mark? Yes, sir. Well, Brother Daniel, you, you started off by making a, um, I think, a very important statement with this lesson, and it's actually an important statement regardless of the lesson, uh, and that is that the kingdom is where the king reigns. Right. And um, I, I think it's imperative to... Um, to understand the the king that we're talking about reigns in righteousness, and um, that means that he's always right; he's never wrong, and never is the king subject to the, the subjects. <laughs> and right. The so when Scripture says that, talking about loosing, loosening, and binding. A lot of people have it have the idea that if if I think it up here, <laughs> heaven will get on board. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah. um, and they think of it from that perspective as they live their life today. But a lot of folks think of it from an eternal perspective. For crying right. out loud, here here's the reality: the King reigns in righteousness. Right. Amen. And um, we are under the authority of the reigning King. Plain and simple. Right. And right. if it's loosed in heaven, if there's liberties in heaven, well, you might as well get on board here and, and loose them here. Right. And if, and if things are bound in heaven, then it's our obligation to understand what that means and to get on board in, in our life. Right. Um, I, I thought you, you, you brought out a lot of wonderful points and I was just kind of, I was listening and, 
and running the, the lesson, the multiplicity of lessons that are taught right here in just this one chapter right. from, from the mouth of the Lord. Um, you talk about the king reigning. This isn't what somebody said that he said. This is him saying it. Right. This is him. Right? And I, I mean, I, obviously that's important. Um, I, I wrote two questions down. What offends me? And then what offends the Lord? Well, uh, if I'm thinking right, my list should be very small. Hmm. The, the older I have gotten, um, it has become very hard to offend me. Uh, I really, I get up every day and work at it. Um, that hasn't always been my uh, mode <laughs> of operation, quite frankly. Um, there are things that offend me, but there, it's a very small circle um, of things. But you know what offends me is totally irrelevant when I ask the right question. What offends my God? Right. Amen. What offends my God? You see, at the beginning of this, before Jesus started talking, I believe that the, um, uh, the full context is laid out mm. by what the disciples were doing. Amen. They came to the king and said, who's the greatest in the kingdom? <laughs> expecting him to choose one of them <laughs> to pick pick his favorite <laughs> i mean what a silly question right right you're in front of the king well duh isn't the king the greatest oh jesus taught him a lesson that if if they were blessed to hear it would serve them well in every facet of their life and it would serve us well he did not entertain <laughs> their right. folly. Yep. He set a child in front of them. And that had to be quite insulting to them, don't you think? Yeah. Here are these men that were called out from by the Lord, and, and he set a child in front of them. And, and Christ then obviously began to teach wonderfully. Um, I only have, I, I want to point to verse 10. And basically, you hit them all. Right. I mean, you, you, you move through the lessons and how they intertwined with each other. But I think there's some catalysts that help us understand. I think it helped me understand. Anyway, the first one is the king is reigning. The second one is that the first error that was made by the disciples um, and it is made by us is that we elevate ourselves and we want to say, you know, how important am I compared to you? Right. Right. Well, there's another point in this in verse 10. Jesus says, take heed that ye despise not one of these little ones. For I say unto you that in heaven, their angels do always behold the face of my father, which is in heaven. Well, that word despise is an interesting word. And by definition, it means to reckon of no value and no importance. Hmm. Christ has just said, in person a child in front of these d disciples who ultimately were going to be charged with um, being in leadership capacities in the kingdom here as, it, as the, the kingdom goes out mm -hmm. and I would say the same thing on the ministry and, and that we have a real responsibility to, to set the right uh, behaviors and to think that someone would behave in such a way that they would manifest behavior that says this person is of no value sure and of no importance right well i think christ puts it in a really specific way and i'll tell you when you read it and then i read it and then it, then it read me <laughs> um i got a shiver up my spine mm. because that one that my behavior might be showing no value toward that one's angels are beholding the face of the father and mm. and somebody's going to be held to account. Hey, oh, yeah. right. Amen. Amen. I just need to chew on that a while. Next. Yeah. <laughs> Brother Mike. <clears throat> well, I, I, I'm totally with Brother Jerry. I thought the Lord blessed you with a really pertinent, timely message certainly one that um, I needed to hear. Hmm. Um, and uh, 
I'm just to let you know, I was paying attention. Here's all my notes that I wrote. <laughs> <clears throat> Actually, this was the uh, homework I, I had for my uh, online class. <clears throat> for, uh, But truly, the uh, the lesson, I, you remember I tried to one time on OBW talk about <clears throat> increasing faith. Mm -hmm. I started in Luke 17. And Luke 17, where you read, is the, uh, it's the same scene, I believe. It's, it's Luke gives a different emphasis on it. Matthew certainly goes into a lot more detail. Uh, <clears throat> but I like Jerry said, and like you said, uh, the, the context is set with the uh, rather asinine uh, attitude of the, of the apostles, who shall be the greatest in the kingdom. Right. And I, I've wondered, I don't know if maybe some, uh, one of you brothers will know, I wondered if that was something from a Jewish synagogue standpoint that they may have been thinking uh because I, <clears throat> I'm going to read something out of James, who I understand was the one who passed to the church in Jerusalem, James, the Lord's brother. And what he says seems so close to this. It's in James chapter two, when he talks about, have not the faith of our Lord with respect to persons. And he talks about if there comes into your assembly, someone with, with gold and richly, uh, rich apparel, and there comes also a poor man in poor apparel, and you say to the rich man, sit here in this seat of honor. Mm -hmm. But you tell the poor man, go back into the nosebleed section, as it were. Uh, <clears throat> it says, you're not, it said, if you do that, you're partial. And there's some, probably sometimes when partiality is okay, but in this case, it's absolutely the wrong thing. Right. There should be no partiality in God's kingdom. And I think maybe the, you think that kind of gets to why he brought the little child because uh, the little it, child in the kingdom, the little yeah. actually a little infant is, yeah. a, is, is just as important as the wisest minister, right. deacon, whatever, what have you. So I was writing, I wrote this <clears throat> while you're in, uh, this, this is, you were really helping me see some things. Goodwill to men, by the way. I like that. Mm -hmm. Goodwill to men. And I thought about Galatians 6.10. Mm -hmm. As much as life in you do good unto all men, especially they of the household of faith. Right. And if, I, I almost went there. if uh, the Lord could be have goodwill to us, mm. we sure ought to have goodwill to one another. Yeah. Uh, so... I thought about this. <clears throat> Matthew 18 seems to me to teach a lesson both from the negative and positive. Yes, absolutely. The negative is how do you get rid of somebody that you don't like? You know, somebody's hurt your feelings or someone is you see as a threat to you or you see as competition to you. And that's a very real thing in God's church. I know that may shock people to know this, but, you know, they're... There's all sorts of subliminal levels of competition going on. It seems right. like in God's kingdom, or there can be if we're not careful. <clears throat> and so <clears throat> the thing is, um, if you consider yourself to be great in the king in the kingdom of heaven and acting superior, and especially to those you deem inferior. You better beware that you do not offend even the ones you consider as inferior. Because if you do, you will be treated as if you were inferior. As you will be. <laughs> and as if you had offended the Lord. He says, do not have, you, we do not have the right to arbitrarily dismiss anyone from fellowship. To do so is to act offensively, and this shall result in the Lord dealing very harshly, right. maybe even fatally, mm. with you. Bottom line, treat everyone in the kingdom of heaven as if they were greater than you. And you shall avoid causing offense. It should not be easy to break fellowship with anyone, but it should be easy 
or it should be our goal anyway, to maintain fellowship. Right, at, right. To the extent that we can. <clears throat> if God has goodwill to men, then we should at least have goodwill to those in the kingdom. Um, and here's something I thought about, and I, I'm about to quit. The process that the Lord described in Matthew 18 deals with the steps that we have to take before we can declare a brother in the faith to longer, no longer be our brother in the faith. Uh, I know we take that Matthew 18 as a way to, to deal with uh, erring brothers and sisters uh, in the church. And I, I'm not saying that it's not, but I think primarily it was based upon this who's greatest in the kingdom of heaven. Right. And, uh, you know, distancing yourself, creating your own little hierarchy or a clique where you're the leader of it. There's no place for that kind of stuff in the church. So if you're going to act that way, then I think by default, you're already someone that the Lord is going to deal with harshly if you're not, if you don't repent. Um, Next, I, I think Philippians 2.3 sure fits in with what you were saying. That's where we should esteem each other better than themselves. I think that's just the, that's not only the right thing to do, it's the safe thing to do. Um, right, yes. If we don't do that, I don't see how we can claim to be the church of mm -hmm. Jesus Christ. Um, I think the church should be inclusive rather than exclusive, although that doesn't mean the church is, uh, of course, yeah, obviated from but it doesn't mean the church loses, discipline. yeah, right. But it shouldn't be the, 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 the disciplines, the point of discipline should not be to get rid of people, correct, it should be to keep people to, to uh, at, at all odds, and if it comes to the point where they just will not comply, then they, they have done it themselves. They have separated right. themselves from the fellowship. Right. Uh, but we should not be afraid to deal with erring church members. We just must, we shouldn't put it off, but we should deal, do it in love and hoping that we are reclaiming them. Well, and, and, I hope one of my points that came across is that the the use of internet has um, I yeah. don't want to say changed the game I so much as it has um, heightened something to an extent that we haven't had to deal with before. I agree. I think you brought that was a good point. And good point. and uh, what I I would like I would like to see a level of, of awareness among uh, myself members of the church that the internet is a little bit more volatile in its use than meets the eye. And oh, yeah. things can, things can go very, very wrong, very, very quickly over the medium of the internet in a way that previously has been unavailable to the scale that we're now having to deal with on the internet. That's I agree. And yeah. so it, I, I feel like it's, it's not so much, like we're dealing with wayward members as it is we're dealing with members of the church using a tool that that perhaps we need to spend a little bit more time understanding yeah anyway that that's what was my well so, some of these guys will remember we used to have uh email listservs where we right the texas focus group some of you guys remember that texas focus group Mm -hmm. And at the beginning, though, some of those things were really, really good. Mm -hmm. Some really right. excellent discussions. But then they became a victim of their own yep. popularity. Well, and that's a that's a that's a great point because I, I I thought about that. You know, Dad, I've been reading your email for forever. Okay, when I was a kid, I used to read all that stuff. <laughs> and I, uh, sorry, we only had one computer in the house. It was open. I read. That's I read. true. So. Um, I mean, I read all that stuff because it was interesting to me, but, uh, and then I also saw all of the, the disagreements and some of the disagreements that were not handled so well. Mm -hmm. And, 
the difference between that and now is that kind of stuff is happening out in the public as yeah, opposed to yeah. in some closed forum. Yeah. Ministers have been having disagreements for forever. Mm -hmm. But yeah. now it's happening in front of the lambs. Yeah. Yeah. And it's, it's hurtful. that's the problem. It's very hurtful. Well, uh, you know, if everybody just agreed with me, then we wouldn't have problems. <laughs> <laughs> and, but everybody thinks that about themselves, you know. If, uh, and there you have it. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> That's the problem. Everybody thinks you just, just need to agree with me. We would be fine. You know, and, yeah. Go ahead, Jerry. Mike, to that point, I mean, I know you said that in jest, sort of. I know that's how you feel, really. But um, <laughs> if, if you stop and think, it, it, relative to Matthew 18, right? It, it, at the point where it says, if a brother shall trespass against thee, that, that word trespass really means like the transgress the law. Right. Okay. Mm. It goes to the point whose law? Mm -hmm. yeah. Whose law? Right. If yeah. you just agree with me, then the law is intact. It's not about that. <laughs> it's, it's God's law. And if we right. don't behave, whether we're in face-to-face -face, uh, conversation or if we're behind a keyboard holding to the law of God that is, is written in our hearts, right. then we're transgressing. Yeah, Absolutely. It is that simple. It, it really is. I, I'll, just, I'll, just, I'll just say this and I'll, I'll give way. Uh, I really feel like Matthew 18 has occasionally been used wrong for wrong things yeah um you know there are, one of the things i remember growing up was a distinction between private offenses and public offenses sure and uh for you know something that's publicly done uh it just needs to be dealt with you know the church just deals with it you don't have to go necessarily step by step according to what it says here but if it's talking about interpersonal relationships i think that's the at the heart of it is the right. interpersonal right connection mm -hmm. fellowship starts there and uh it shouldn't be easy to break fellowship with your brother or sister in the lord right should, should be cherished amen brother. right okay thank you son that was wonderful yeah. lord bless you brother brother dennis well, I also enjoyed very much the uh, message this evening. It kind of walked all over my toes, but uh, I'll forgive him for I, that. Mine, mine too. <laughs> my own toes. But yes, and especially in the thinking about the things that we discuss, especially in the stand, if we will keep it between Genesis and Revelation, We'll be a whole lot better off. Boy, and that's true. Amen. <laughs> and leave Amen. the outside outside. I, and I have been guilty, and as I assume you, brethren, have also of um, fudging on that a little bit. Mm -hmm. yeah. I don't like to admit it, but you're right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, we all are. But yeah, and then thinking of ourselves being so great. Sure. And I just want to bring a thought in about Emmanuel. That was my subject last Sunday and I enjoyed very much discussion of the subject of Emmanuel. Uh, God with us. Mm -hmm. In John 1, of course, we know that in the beginning was the Word and the Word was with God and the Word was God and the Word became flesh. And this one that became flesh was God. Hmm. And this is the one that they're asking who is the greatest. Yeah. <laughs> He's the greatest. This great. one He's the greatest. who was God, who stooped to wash their feet. Yeah. And not only that, even more so, he stooped to take the weight of punishment for our sins. Amen. Amen. We have no room to talk. Amen. Amen. Excellent. Excellent. Thank you for letting me be a part. <laughs> Thank you Thank for you, me. Brother Dennis. <laughs> Thank, Thank you, you for being a part, <laughs> Brother Dennis. That, we love that, you. That was wonderful. Thank you, Brother yeah. Dennis. Um, Brother Daniel, you hear me okay? I can hear you. Um, 
you preached a hard sermon. Um, there, there is so much contained in Matthew 18. And as you brought out, it's all good, but some of it really, as Dennis said, steps all over our toes yeah. and it's, uh, and it's not easy to preach, but, but I think, I thank God that he put that on your heart tonight. Amen. Um, I'll not, I'll not say much. I will say brother Mike quoted some verses that popped to my mind, Galatians six and 10. Uh, another one that came to mind, I think is the 15th chapter of the book of Romans hmm. in the first verse. It says, uh, um, wherefore, uh, we then that are strong ought to bear the infirmities of the weak and not to please yeah. ourselves. And that gets quoted quite a bit. Uh, if we're strong, bear the weak. Uh, if we're weak, we, we, we hope that the, the strong would bear us. But the last part of that verse says, and not to please ourselves. We mm, are very yeah. uh, a very self-pleasing um, right. yeah. entity. Um, we want to do what, what makes us happy. Um, Matthew 18 verse 15 begins that, uh, that little series there in a very positive way. Uh, it says then if somebody's transgressed or trespassed against you to go to them and if they hear you, it says you've gained a brother. That's right. So it's, <laughs> it starts out positive in that if you know if if we do what we're supposed to do yeah the end result is not to pick somebody up and toss them over the cliff right Amen. right the yeah. end result we should be looking for is not to please ourselves amen the end result we should be looking for is that they you know a lot of times they don't even know what they've done amen. because they didn't do it intentionally sometimes it's intentional it's true but the end result, intentional or otherwise, is that when that conversation's over, you're hugging the neck of your brother or your sister. That's Amen. right. Amen. That's right. And and that to me is such a great positive yeah. in, in the middle of a lesson about a problem the disciples were having and a problem yeah. that we have. Right. Um, you know, you said uh something to the effect, and it made me think of of, of this this thought came to mind. We need to not be so concerned with the waywardness of others, and we need to be more concerned with the waywardness of ourselves. Yeah. I'm prone to go wayward. I'm prone to go out of the way. Uh, I need to be concerned with that more than, you know, mm -hmm. take the beam out of my eye before I worry about the moat in my brother's eye. Sure. The Lord also said, and this is a hard one, love your enemies. Mm-hmm. Do good to them that hate you and Ooh. pray for them that despitefully use and abuse you. The Lord himself, he was smote on the right cheek. He turned, gave him the left. Uh, there's so many lessons contained in that. And uh, you brought out so many wonderful lessons. Let me leave you this, this one thought. And, and Mike, I thought about <laughs> the... Uh, the what was it the texas what was that the texas focus group texas texas focus eh. group my goodness talk, talk about the wayback machine right yeah it's a blast <laughs> from the past um i had i got called out on that I, I, and i'm not going to mention names i got called out on that in some discussion this was towards the end when it started yeah. falling apart and boy i just got boy i i got lamb lambasted you know <laughs> and i thought that's interesting. And I picked up the phone and I called, uh, I called the brother that sent the email and I said, boy, you really laid into me. He goes, well, I wouldn't have done that to your face. <laughs> oh, what? And I said, but doing it this way is the same. Don't you think that <laughs> a lot of people right don't here. realize the impact of social media Yes. Amen. Oh, social Lord. media is great. I mean, yeah. social yes, media is. is what gives us this platform, right? Absolutely. Yes, yes. sir. Yeah. Right. yeah. Yeah. Social media is great, but it can be used for for terrible things. Yeah. And it has terrible been, yeah. things. And yeah, it makes it easy. It may. Well, that's and that's the point, Daniel. Yeah. Man, you jumped my point. 
I'm so sorry. <laughs> <laughs> it makes it so easy because I'm not in contact with people. You know, I'm not standing right next to brother Jerry and I'm not standing right next to brother Dennis, or I'm not over in Florida with brother Chris Krause or, um, you know, brother Crawford. Um, but I have access to them over social media or email. But the same disruptions can be caused face to face too. Yeah. Right. And it's totally not necessary. It's totally not necessary. Uh, let me, I'll, I'll stop with this, even though I've got lots of thoughts and give away, brother yeah. David. Um, <laughs> would you agree that Satan has used the events of this year? And when I, I'm not just talking about COVID. Got it. All right. And, but the events of this year, and there've been a lot of events. Do you, do you think Satan has used these events to try to, in a yet another attempt, tear down the church? People have been locked up in their homes with nothing but their keyboard and the refrigerator. <laughs> <laughs> hey, yeah. that's getting personal. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Tell me about it. But, well, yeah. I was, I, I think I, I think I've said it on here before, but the first thing I tell my kids at the beginning of every single school year is drama is for people that have time for it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, and, you have, yeah. and that's and so true. That's that. No, this is exactly what has happened this year. The level of drama that we have had this year is entirely because of quarantine, and the tool of it all has been social media. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. I can see that. Yeah. yeah. But um, I would encourage everybody that's listening, everybody that listens to this later, um, don't don't give the devil space. Right. Do not. Uh, that's right. Right. I can't encourage everybody to love, like Brother Daniel was talking about, Brother Jerry was talking about, I can't encourage everybody to love as much as we need to love uh, and to be patient uh, and to be kind. And when we're strong, don't please ourselves. Let's lift a brother up. And when we're yeah. weak, let's hope somebody lifts us up and doesn't please Man. themselves. God right. help us. God help Amen. us. Brother Amen. David, take us home, brother. Yeah. <laughs> Here he, well, you know, binding and loosing is one of the most interesting uh, concepts and statements uh, in, in, in the scriptures. And it's something that I've been chasing for 50 years trying to make sense of it wow. and uh you know and i'm glad you brought that up in, in the context <laughs> that you did uh because it's a very very important concept important enough to the lord it was right smack there in the middle of uh matthew 18 yes yeah. and so there's there's and he's talking to the church so he's talking to us to do yes. too. Mm -hmm. whenever you read at matthew 18 read it as jesus talking straight to you so uh, the thing is that binding and loosing is not an eternal concept. Mm. Uh, if it is, then most of our articles of faith are wrong. Yeah. All right. And so <laughs> sure. it's talking about a timely concept. Sure. And then, in, so, uh, and there's a positive way of looking at it, and there's a negative way. So there's a good binding and a bad binding. Mm -hmm. sure. there's a good loosing and there's a bad loosing so right there's some things you need to bind and some things you don't some things you need to loose some things you don't so you know i look at it like if you restrain good within you, you know, whatever thy hand find of the do do with all thy mind right or if you you see a good thing to do you do it not you know Jesus said, that's a sin. That's a sin of omission. Right. So you bound a good work. And what the Lord says is that, well, then heaven's going to restrain good from happening to you. You bound it on earth. It's now bound in heaven. Um, or, you know, there's a negative Lucy. I'm just going to let my depravity go. I'm just going to say yeah. what I think, you know, right. Uh, you know, um, Hey, I say what I think, man. <laughs> well, I'm not interested. Don't ever do that. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, 
Some people like to air their dirty laundry. I don't. I don't want even want to see your clean laundry. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I don't want to see certain things of your laundry, dirty or clean. You know, I'm just. Uh, I'm just natural. Well, that's the problem with you. Uh, so if you lose, let your sin nature just just have its course. Well, then there's gonna judgment's gonna be loosed in heaven. Mm, right. against you so uh, so when you think about social media everything you write in social media is as if you are saying it to the entire world yes mm -hmm. all right it's Whether as you... if you're in a pulpit preaching at the chambers creek association and the first primitive association and the california meetings and the oklahoma and arkansas meetings it's as if you're there talking to every person. Yes. Amen. Okay. Are you going to bind or are you going to lose? Mm. What are you going to bind and what are you going to lose? I, I, I'm sorry. I don't mean to interrupt you, but no, no, I, think, I think that is the disconnect mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. uh, we have, we, many people have not accepted that premise of social media that that social media is that level of public yeah. that it is uh it's it's a pulpit yeah what it is i, I mean yeah, i yeah, i do yeah. i do goofy stuff on facebook too i mean i made a star wars post a few days ago but no one's going to misconstrue that as being you know anything else if i start putting opinions on facebook that are those are opinions by elder daniel montgomery whether they be spiritual or not Right. Sorry. And, and, and that's the thing is, uh, it's not a, uh, it, it, it's not a green light to, oh. to vent or to let, just let everything go. Mm -hmm. Nor should it be looked upon as an evil thing in that you're going to bind the good. Right. All right. right? Let's loose the good and bind the evil. Mm -hmm. And so, um, it, it, uh, so I, I, I love I love the thoughts that you had. Mm -hmm. You know, I really do. Uh, I love that you ended with love, the the new commandment. I mean, yeah, it's, love one another. That it identifies us as, as children of God. Yeah. Um, I love that you started out with goodwill. You know, it, but, it, Brother Mark said that was a tough sermon. Mm -hmm. but you had a soft opening and you had a soft end amen yeah mm -hmm. but it was all that bologna and salami in the middle <laughs> yeah, pepperoni, those jalapenos you threw That's in there that spin. was a spicy meatball <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but, uh, um, that is if, if, if I may say uh, this will be this is going to be one of the last OBWs of 2020 mm-hmm and uh, this is going to be a year that's going to be reviewed time and time and time and time again. As I like to tell people, we are living in history. Yeah, right. Mm -hmm. We are. What is history going to say about you? Mm. Yeah. What is history going to say about the old band? Well, Mike, Dave, Dan, Jerry, Mark, they had a little program on Wednesday night. And they acted like a bunch of dummies. <laughs> but they're trying to help the Lord's yep. people. Yep. We're trying to feed the sheep all we want and feed the lamb. That's that's all it is. That's all we want. Yep. And if one person hears and enjoys and is edified, then it's all worth it. All yes, worth it, it is. Yeah. Yep. And that's goodwill. As God is our witness. That's really what we want. Is... Amen. Yeah. And, you know, uh, I mean, you think about uh we ought to have a year in review uh, i'm just saying uh, out loud here <laughs> you're talking about greatest of have a slideshow yeah 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 <laughs> you know you know the yeah, the outtakes what, what yeah. A, yeah yeah there's a lot of <laughs> you got lots of outtakes that's for sure but uh you know you think about what this has done and we're able i've got to know brother jerry's through this mm -hmm. unfortunately mm -hmm. yes we have yeah, yeah. Hey, the good yeah. of that the good and the bad. Yeah. We had to bind, we had to lose. Yeah, man. <laughs> <I know. laughs> 
brother David Bound and Mike Luce. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I would like I a Luce. Like <laughs> Let me get that out of my bag. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, I've got no brother. I mean, I grew up with Mark Brown, but I got now it's like who would have thought? Who would have thought Mark's such a great guy? You know? Yeah, yeah. Who would have thought? We just really, didn't think I we're know. possible. <clears throat> I know, and uh, uh, Ward he, first. He, <laughs> well, you know, the 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 best is at last. You know, but at, huh? <laughs> at any rate, uh, it's good that uh, we're reminded of this. It is. Yeah, but it's Daniel Sermon, and and I uh, applaud you, and I thank the Lord the way you constructed your message tonight. You started off with goodwill, amen, and you ended with love. Yeah, and you showed us how to get there. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, that's, that's why good. we need to pay attention. It's news you can use. Yes, that's right. right. Yes, and it's fit to print. Yep. So at any rate, that's 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 what I have to say, and. Thank you very much. Well, thank you. <laughs> Would y'all be surprised if I said that uh, Brother Mike Mosley had a couple of comments? Yeah. Yeah. I, want I want them. I want them. So I'm I'll give you one. And I, and he, he, as usual, he summarizes what I stumble through very succinctly. He said, yeah, social media is nothing but a tool. And he says, like a hammer, a hammer can be used to build up and a hammer mm. can be used to tear down. That's mm. right. Right. So, That's right. What a what a real that's a good comment. Yeah. Yeah. Brother know? Daniel, I am I have aught with thee for saying including Star Wars in with Goofy. So <laughs> <laughs> I forgive you, brother. I forgive you. We got I mean, it's a serious matter. It's a serious matter. <laughs> yeah, me and me and Dave were we saw the original that's right, yes. Copper Cove. Yes. Right. Yes. I've been to that theater. It's not a theater anymore. Yeah, with a bunch of theater back then, yeah. and then we saw the Empire Strikes Back okay. at the Ridgely Theater on Camp Bowie Boulevard. In Fort after Fort. we let, after we finished church, <laughs> Irving. Now Mike, yeah, he always because they didn't have lunch. They didn't have lunch, so we always he always stopped early, so we could get to that spaghetti place. We, <laughs> and we went, yeah, to Crystal Spaghetti. Yeah, Palace. Crystal Spaghetti. And those were some we good times. We went to the Ridgely. Oh, that was a great. What does it have to do with spiritual matters? I don't know. I don't know, but something else, uh, and we had talked about this since it is coming to the end of the year and Christmas is just two days away. We talked about yeah. having uh, some additional folks join us. Okay. So if we want to do That's that right. now, I've this already our, sent the text and here comes here comes uh, here comes our motley crew. Hang on. Mr. Leslie, are they coming into your room or my room? Oh, <laughs> oh look at all those people. I know them. Hang on, hang on. Look at all of them. Hey, Leslie, come here. I think so. I'm going to go get mine. Oh, wow, man. So I think. Yeah, Dad. Huh? There are. Look at all the people at Mark. So I think everybody, everybody probably knows my crew. Uh, you got, you got Graham here. There's yeah. my lovely wife Carol. Here is my granddaughter Adeline. So Here's my oh, oldest daughter up. Catherine. Here's my youngest daughter Sarah, and there is Isaac. Isaac, wow. and I can't see wow. Seth. There, and there's Seth, my son-in-law. Hey, man. So, okay. Yeah, yeah. So, Judy. Well, oh, I'm okay. Sorry, I can't, I have I've been making I'm oh, look at that. And look at Jerry. And the, oh, look. <laughs> wow. This is Aubrey. Hey. Hello, Aubrey. Hey. 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 That's been <laughs> So remember, we're live, y'all. <laughs> so I think we're all here to say Merry Christmas, aren't we? Yes. Merry Christmas. Oh, Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. God bless. Merry Christmas. God, bless. <laughs> God bless you love all. We love you. Yeah. It's so good to see you. Hi, Leslie. Hi, Sister Hi. Cheryl. Hi. <laughs> Sister Judy. How are you? It's good to see you. Stephanie's putting Alice into bed, but she okay. says hello. Say, say, say Merry Christmas, everybody. 
Yeah. Yay. Wow. Merry wow. Christmas. Can't top that one. No. So, uh, no. so real good. quick, next next Wednesday, our last broadcast of 2020, Elder Gary Rhodes, Lord willing, will be on the program. So y'all pray for Brother Gary and uh, pray for the program. We pray that you all have a wonderful Christmas, wonderful holiday. Please stay safe. Uh, enjoy it any way that you can. And God bless each and every one of you as we head into the new year. All right, everybody. Are, is that it? Daniel, God bless. Merry Christmas. Hey. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Bye. 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 <laughs>